All right, guys, so uh, I'm just going to make a very long video about how to, well, let's say long. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure out how to actually turn this into a video. It took me a little while to actually figure out how to do it. But just, uh, I will see how this goes. Um, but what the purpose of the video is, is to show you how to actually turn this octo print. So beer bottles in the way. Um, uh, you know, usually you use Octoprint by connecting uh, to Octoprint to your Raspberry Pi over the local network. Um, I'm going to show you a way to do it for free over the internet using BNC. Um, as I mentioned before in another video, the Octoprint actually runs on top of Linux. Linux is perfectly capable of running a VNC server. Uh, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or a Raspberry Pi 4, um, any Raspberry Pi 4 is going to be powerful enough to actually run VNC. To run a, you know, a, a visual operating system that you can control your Pi over. So it's really cool. Um, I'll show you how you can actually, I mean, you'll slice, the, the Pis are a little bit underpowered for slicing softwares. So I think you're still better off uh, slicing on your own machine like your laptop your computer um, and then I'll show you how you can how you can actually um, send the files over the internet to your your printer and you can print remotely if you want to but it's mainly good for monitoring your prints um, on say your phone using a VNC viewer you can use it for uploading prints as well if you like if you have your wife or girlfriend or someone at home who can take the old one off the build plate all right let's get started you can see here I've got a brand new install of Octoprint running. Um, like I said, Octoprint runs on top of a Linux um, operating system, which means that you can connect to it via SSH. If you're running um, Mac, if you're running Mac OS, then it's a little bit easier. If you're running Windows, then you need to figure out what kind of software you need to um, SSH into your, into your Raspberry Pi running Octoprint. That's not too hard to do, just do a little Google search. You should probably find a YouTube video that will teach you how to do it in five minutes. In my case, I can just use terminal. Uh, you need to type in ssh pi at octopi.local. It'll ask if you want to continue, if you trust the, uh, the fingerprint, type yes. Then it's asking for a password. The password is raspberry. Now I always do this with a new install of Linux or, or anything running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I will go to sudo raspberry config raspberry. Go down to Sorry, changes the password uh, for the current user. Yes. And I'll enter in my own personal password. And I recommend you do the same. Cool. Okay. Great. The next thing we need to do is we need to update our apt get. So type in sudo apt get update and this will just update the packages that will be downloaded during this uh, this tutorial so it just means that nothing's going to be out of date we you, you know it just it just updates the links to what you need to download next we're going to install vnc Install real VNC VNC server. So we're going to install VNC server. I'll ask if you want to dedicate this much memory to the install. Type Y and hit enter. This could take a little while, so I'll fast forward through this for you. Right, that took a while. Uh, the next thing is going to take longer, so we need to type. We need to install something called LX session. So to do that, we type in sudo apt 
get install lx session. And when I hit enter, this is going to take a while. And when when you when you uh, start it, it's going to take you a while too. You're going to have to again give a, you know permission to use the space. Uh, type y and hit enter. Don't uh, worry about this taking ages. I you know if, especially if this is kind of the first time you've played around with your Linux running on your uh, on your Raspberry Pi, can sometimes take a long time. They're not super fast uh, computers. So I'm going to skip ahead, and when this is finished downloading and installing, we'll we'll get on to the next bit. In the meantime, I'm going to get a beer. Okay, so that's after installing. We've got LX session on our uh, machine now on our on our Pi. So let's go back into our sudo raspi config. Then you need to go down to five interfacing options and you need to go to VNC and you need to enable this. Okay. Then you need to go down to seven advanced options and you need to go down to A5 resolution and you might as well go ahead and pick the highest resolution. We can get out of that. Now let's go sudo reboot now and that will close the connection via ssh we don't really need that for now uh, we'll just leave that alone obviously you can see that octopi is after disconnecting here because the pi is rebooting in the meantime you need to install um, vnc viewer so go to realvnc.com um, Go to VNC Connect, download VNC Viewer, and this is going to be something you're going to run on either your your laptop, which might be Mac, Windows, or you could even run it on your uh, on your iPhone, on your iOS uh, iPhone, or on your Android phone. I've got it on my phone, and it's very handy. I'll, I'll maybe show you a little if I can figure out how to do a screen record on phone. But you can you can monitor and control your your uh, octopi with your phone while you're out and about as well. So it's kind of handy just to have, say, the webcam um, up full screen on your on your Raspberry Pi, and then you can sort of like open it up every once in a while as you're going about your day, uh, just to make sure your house isn't burning down. So choose whichever operating system you're running, download it, install it. Um, it looks like this on Mac. You'll probably need to make an account as well. I mean, you definitely need to make an account if you want to run this. Um, if you want to run this uh, remotely, so I'm just going to sign out. So you'd need to so click sign in, and then you'd need to put in your email, and you'll need to create an account. It'll send you uh, an email to confirm. You'll need to go through the usual kind of steps of of setting an account up. But the Pi should have reloaded by now. I'm just testing that we've got good connections. Okay. Now, we have we have VNC installed on our laptop. We've got a Pi with VNC server running on it. So, what we'll want to do is we'll want to make a new connection. So, I've just right clicked there and I'm going down to new connection and you're going to type in octopi.local and we'll just call it um, test octopi local connection. I'm just calling it this for kind of to make it stand out because I've got a few uh, octopies connected via VNC. So we've created this new uh, annoyingly long named Octopi VNC connection. Double click it. Continue. You're going to need to use your um, Pi username and then the password that hopefully you've made a new password earlier on in the video um, in, the, in the instructions. If you didn't, it'll just be Raspberry.
Okay, so you're presented now with a desktop. This is essentially an emulated desktop. Um, it's as though you had a screen plugged into your own laptop from the Pi. So you're now running your um, your 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 Linux via VNC. So your username is Pi again. Passwords up to you. Now, this is an extremely light version of Linux. Like they haven't they haven't even added anything. If you go to um, applications, there's not even an internet browser. And we want an internet browser because we want to essentially use your browser like you would normally to connect to um, to your Octopi. So the easiest way for us to actually do that is to install something called Chromium. So let's connect back to um, let's connect back to our, our Octopi via SSH. So SSH pi at Octopi .local. And we're just going to type in sudo apt chromium, C H R O M I U M. Sorry, install chromium. So take a couple of minutes. Okay, Chromium is installed. Um, don't close down your terminal because we'll use the SSH, SSH connection in a couple of minutes for something else. But I'll just go back over and you can see now we've got Chromium web browser in our internet uh, folder. Let's copy that over. Let's copy, uh, sorry, drag it over and make a little shortcut on our desktop for opening it up. Now, just to show you that this is, you know, already on its way to being kind of handy, if we open it up, let me just type in octopi.local. Okay, we can't just type in octopi.local, we've got to type in HTTP. We could log in. Now, it would be a little bit pointless because why wouldn't we just do that on our own laptop? But let's get a little bit more interesting because at the moment we've got a local connection. We're still only connected to uh, VNC via the local network. But you should have set up your own account and what you can do then is you can click on this little dark VNC icon on the bottom right corner Click on this sign in uh, little link here. Use your credentials to log in. You can choose whatever you want to call the uh, remote connection, so I'm going to call this 3D printer remote. Click apply, enter your password. You should uh, get some sort of successful message. Click done. Now we can go up here and we can actually disconnect. And what you should now have is if you go into this uh, on the left, you've got an option with little kind of guys. You should see, see that 3D printer remote or whatever you call it appears. And it doesn't actually appear in address book, but you can make it. But it's handy enough if it's just appearing here. Double click this. You can accept that and continue. And then you need to use your credentials again. And I'm, you know what, I'm going to 
remember password just to not have to do this again. Great, so now we're literally connected over the internet. I could be on a different network, I could be in a different country, and I could just, I mean, I'll disconnect for now, but I could be anywhere in the world, as long as I've got an internet connection and my Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, then I can open this up and it will connect me to my Raspberry Pi. And then I can start controlling my uh, printer via OctoPrint if I just go into Chromium web browser. But we can make it a little bit easier, um, and that would also mean that you'd have to, you would have to um, slice your 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 STL files into G code on your Raspberry Pi, and that's not exactly ideal. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go and we're going to create a few handy shortcuts. So go back into terminal. and go to CD desktop. It just moves you into the desktop uh, of your Raspberry Pi. And then type in sudo nano, and we'll call it uh, octo pi the desktop. What we're going to type in here is desktop entry. Type equals link. Name equals octo pi. Right. Equals control printer and very important part, URL equals HTTP colon forward slash forward slash octopi dot local. Control X, save modified, modified buffer Y for yes. Hit enter to save it as octopi dot desktop. Now if we go back into our VNC, we can see that we have this little kind of a shortcut here. If we double click that, it will open up Octopi straight away and we would have to log in. Let's create another couple of, um, actually, you know what? I need to show you something else first. So let's open up Chromium. Let's connect to Gmail or get our Chromium to connect to um, our Google account because what we're going to do is we're going to use Google Drive and we're going to upload files to Google Drive from our laptop and then we're going to download them from Octoprint. Sorry I actually live in Poland so things appear in Polish first. I have got two-factor authentication, so I need to tap something on my phone. Yes, it's me. Great. Kind of hoping it's going to give me a message asking, asking if I want to sync my account. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. okay, we'll need to do that again. Um, so, I need to create a user. So, go over here, create a user, give it your name, 
sign into Gmail. Oh my God. Going to do two FA again. I'm going to close out of this. Yeah, why not? Okay. Looks like we're in business. Okay, so a couple of things. First of all, let's go to settings. We're going to change our download location. Give it a second because it moves. We're going to change this to, I believe we need to right click, show hidden folders and files. We need to change it to dot octoprint. And then the subdirectory inside is uploads. Okay. Click open and that's done. And I'll show you why that is, because let's show our hidden dot octoprint uploads. And if I get some G code file, let's um let's do this on my own laptop over here. So I'll go find some G code. have some somewhere this is a ironically named directory called tidy so I'm just uploading this um you know locally with my own laptop so now it's in octoprint if I go back into VNC you can see that I've just uh, made a G code file up here so now my Raspberry Pi can see it's there and let's uh show you that the Octopod can also see it's there. I'll log in there. So let's remember log in. A second to boot itself up. Yeah, so I could literally click this again. I could be anywhere in the world, so this could be remote uh, control already. And actually, you can see your webcam. You can see it can control it. You can see it moving live. Tiny little bit of lag, but it's not too bad. Depends on your internet connection. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually get our Google Drive connected. So let's go to drive.google.com. Now I have a folder inside my hobbies folder. Should maybe be in my Total mess folder, 3D printing. And what I want to do is I want to get this link. I'm going to copy that. And let's go into tools. Let's go to desktop first. Tools, open current folder in terminal. So let's list all of the files. You can see that we've got octopi.desktop. So let's go sudo 
octo pi, sorry, nano, octo pi dot desktop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this, but I'm going to make a new file, just use this as a little uh, kind of starter, little little kind of template. So I'm going to call this G drive. I'm going to give it a comment of And uh, it obviously needs to have a different URL. So I've still got that in my, in my, uh, I've got it saved. So now control X, yes, but I'm gonna call it something else. I'm gonna call it G drive. Yeah, like capitals. Y for yes. Gonna go back in here and I'm gonna call this comment of 3D printer webcam. And now you need to type in, mm, I kind of forget. So let's go into Octoprint. Let's go to little toolbar. Let's go webcam and time lapse. Uh, webcam, forward slash webcam, forward slash question mark equals stream. Okay. Action equals stream. Yeah. Okay. Control X, uh, save, yes. Again, we want to give it a different name. Going to call it printer cam, save under a different name, yes. Great, now let's see what all of that has done. So, let's imagine that I open up my um, laptop and I'm in a, in a cafe away from my apartment. My printer's running or I have some, you know, uh, some smart plug or something so I can turn it on remotely. I open up my Octopi. Lovely, I've got a connection, okay. I open up my G drive. Pretty slick, I've got a connection. And I open up my printer cam. Okay, I know you can look at your printer camera from here, but what we're going to do is we're going to just leave this kind of open so we can view it a little bit more clearly. It's You can see it's a bit bigger. And what I would do is I would go back, you know, I'm, I'm just after leaving VNC. So I would print something um, that I've downloaded. Let's say Cool, okay, slice it, save it to file, open folder, there is my file, my G code file. I can go to drive in my own laptop, you know, my remote location, whatever you want to call it. Go to hobbies, be printing. And 
load that. Okay, it's in there. So now I'll go into my VNC, go to my Google Drive, download my file. And because I've set the download location as the same folder that Octoprint stores G code in, you can see I've got my hex box uh, bottom G code here. So I can click load and print and it is starting to print. You see the temperature needs to get up to temperature. You know, it'll take a little bit of time. Kind of look at it in my own laptop here, but you can see the temperature starting to rise. It is starting to print. So that's been a pretty long video, um, but once it's done, you know, you're really like one click away from having VNC running uh, or VNC connecting. Like it's literally just double click and you've got your VNC up and running wherever you are. Uh, you can have this on your phone, which looks really nice. You can, what I like to do is, you know, I'll control it with my laptop. I won't do too much with my phone. You can't slice on your phone, really. But what I'll do is I'll just leave this running full screen, and then I'll open this up on my phone, and it's it's big enough that I can kind of clearly see enough see what's going on with my print. Webcam's placed nicely, so I can see if the first layer has gone down or if something started to come off, or if it's gone spaghetti. Um, obviously you can use paid services like the Spaghetti Detective, but this is free and in my mind it gives me a little bit more control and a little bit more sort of just kind of nice tinkering. So I hope this has been of use. I uh, hope it's, you know, um, going to help some of you out. I'd love some feedback. Uh, you know, I'm not a massive uh, video producer. I just kind of thought of a couple of things that were pretty cool and couldn't see anything out there that made it simple to actually implement. So. You know, I hope this is useful to some of you guys out there. All right, all the best. Peace.